Oh, the time has come to be out of focus. That's what we're doing today, being out of focus. All right, what do you think about these glasses? First of all, they're pretty nice, right? You might say, oh, they're prescription. The poor guy has to wear them. They're not. They're actually Bluetooth glasses and they play music in the sides. And I forgot to take them off before I started filming, but I guess that I don't care that much. Anyway, today is the day. It is the day before the Utah opener of the muzzleloader season. I was a little bit up in the air on when I was gonna be able to go on this hunt or whether I was gonna be able to go on this hunt or not, but wife's home. She's been home now for like five days. Everything's going well. Little boy's doing really good. And uh, man, I just need to say thank you to you guys for all the good comments and the congratulations and stuff. I mean, we sat there in the hospital and just smiled and read all the comments on YouTube. So thank you guys for those. They really, really were awesome to read. Now it is time to go hit up the Utah muzzleloader. I shot my muzzleloader last night, my Utah gun. And I was kind of all over the map. So I'm going to try to fine tune it for a second this morning. Just see exactly where it is. And uh, I'm going to head up. But look at this. This is the pack that I'll be hauling in. So this is the 5600. That's uh, a stone glacier, and it has a lid on it, so a little bit more cubic inches. This is all food in there, just a whole bunch of dehydrated food, um, some jerky, which is also dehydrated food, and then um, all my gear is stuffed in the big bag, little front pockets full of the stuff I need to get to easy, and really, this pack is not full. It's cinched down right there, but I am going to swing in. I'm going to pick up another under quilt at Outdoor Vitals on my way, so that will fill up the rest of that pack. And I got a little bit of camera gear that I got to bring. That's what I'm hauling in. And so far it's not too heavy because most of the bulk of that pack is like lightweight stuff like my top quilt for my hammock, my hammock, my tarp, clothing. It's not very heavy stuff, so I'm probably rolling in 45, 50 pounds or so on that pack. Maybe a little bit more once I add a little bit of water. But we're going. The spot that we're going to go hunt is a spot I've been hunting for several years. It's a spot where I killed uh, this deer. That one up there, as well as that one right there. So we've killed some decent bucks in there in the past. The numbers aren't there this year. We know that going in just simply because when the water dries up up there, it just becomes a different place. But we know there are some deer there. We pulled our trail cameras this year, or uh, this last week. Troy went in while I was at the hospital with the kid and uh, had these deer on it. So we're excited to see if we can turn them up. Anyway. I know this video is delayed. This hunt is starting today, which is Wednesday, but you probably won't see it until Saturday. I did that so that uh, I would be able to hunt the whole day and not have to hike in and out so much. So I'm going to do like a two or three day delay on these videos, and then it will be going live every single day as I get caught back up. So thank you guys for tuning in. Welcome back to the Heartbeat Series. Thanks for the love and the support. Let's go kill a deer. All right, there she is, loaded down. And I mean loaded. Actually, has a little bit more room up top. I could expand that bag out a little bit, but I got all I want to carry in there. It's probably 70 pounds right now with water, gear, food, and the gun. So, also got the camera gear on there. It's old, old stone glacier. I don't think it's maxed out. It could handle more. And it might have to on the way out. Might be hauling meat, hopefully. So, going to get up the trail, a couple hour hike in, maybe three with this pack, and we'll be to camp tonight. Made it up the big hill, topped out about halfway there maybe. About another hour, hour and a half to go. Deer sign everywhere, already saw a doe. It's looking good. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven right there. Two on this hill, five or six up here, and about 10 or 20 in that meadow behind me. Just jumped a four point. Had a two point and another little buck with him. 22 inch buck, maybe a 140, 150 buck. Sweet, tomorrow's the day. Hundred and twenty yards dead all day that's like a two by three and a three point or something a lot of deer in here Whew, made her guys man it's a long ways in here <laughs> forget every time how far it is across that top but a few hour hike i think my gps said it was five point something 5.6 miles up here that's my pedometer i don't know how accurate that thing is though because we had it clocked to eight the last time but uh Whatever, who cares, it's a long ways, and we're here, and the gear's here. This heavy pack rode awesome, I actually felt great. 
the whole way up. So a ton of deer, you guys. I'm so stoked. I this is one of my favorite hunts of all time, just because the deer are here. We're gonna see deer. We're gonna see bucks. I guarantee it. Now set up camp and get some shut eye. Troy and his wife Sarah should be in here pretty dang quick. So it is time. All right, guys. It might look like I'm inside of a tent, but wrong. I was under a hammock tarp. Ow, now a tree got my head. Hold on. So this is camp. Right there. Oh. Troy and Sarah, oh. AKA, AKA Troy Ceratops, are staying in that tent. And I have this palace over here. I've got the old tarp set up. And the hammock. Got the down under quilt, the down top quilt. We're gonna sleep warm tonight. The pack is in hunting mode now. Took all the heavy stuff out of it. Now it probably weighs about 15 pounds so I can go light. Lucky shed crazy hat hanging in the tree. There's one slight problem. That little guy up there in the sky. But we're not gonna let that get us down. We're just gonna get up in the morning. Oh man, I look like some sort of ginger monk. Hold on. Anyway. We're gonna get up in the morning and see if we can find these deer. There's been a lot of them. Troy decided to empty his clip on a coyote. Uh, right above camp on the way in so Sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, I need a scapegoat. It doesn't matter <laughs> So as long as we don't see anything if we don't see anything tomorrow, I'll just blame Troy. Good night. We'll see you in the morning Good morning people Troy and Sarah are dressed and rolling They're on the ball. I still have to uh, grab my gun and put my backpack on so I'm a ways away from being ready to go It's 620 630 um, My hike's pretty short <clears throat> Just gonna go up to a vantage point. Last night got pretty dang cool. Um, slept warm in the hammock, no problem. It's cold getting dressed this morning. I put on every piece of gear that I brought, even though I'll probably shed them as soon as I get out of camp. That's what I always do. I'm like, it's cold, I need all my stuff. Hopefully, I can get up there without making too much noise and get settled in before the deer really start moving. So, let's go. Posted up on a ridge, just on a overlook. I can see the whole draw below me. Everything from 30 to about 300 yards. I can see behind me about 100 yards plus the opposite side hill. The water's down below us. So I think as the day gets a little bit later, we'll have a lot of deer moving up past us. I already glassed up a little buck down here, just a two point. And a few does, but they don't come off the water too terribly early. Plus it's a full moon, they probably fed all night. A lot of them might be better already, but hopefully We've had a trail camera on this ridge with a big cheater buck on it. And I'm hoping to catch him coming off the water, but these big deer usually go to bed early, so we'll see what happens. Well, it's getting kind of late. Not that late, it's only about eight o'clock. And the deer are still moving, but they're going to bed. That buck that I was hoping would show up didn't show up, but I saw a few other bucks and a ton of other does, a lot of deer. So I'm just going to kind of start working my way back around and seeing if I can catch them coming up on one of these faces and going to bed. I got kind of a little trail I like to work across the front here. I'll actually probably just go over to another glassing point and watch the other side. There will be more hunters down low and they'll tend to push the deer up. So even as it gets a little bit later in the morning, sometimes they'll have good deer come up out of the bottom they got bumped. I heard two shots this morning is all, which is pretty few for up here, but it is a Wednesday. A lot of guys aren't hunting today, so 
bought a deer though, a lot of sign. Pretty solid morning. Just had about 20 deer go up the hill in front of me. The very last one was a pretty decent buck. Looked like a small four pointer, maybe a three by four. Just like a two year old, three year old buck. Had him at a hundred and about 120 yards. There was another deer off to the left. And instead of taking the route that the rest of the deer took across the open face, had its head ducked and it just went right up through the thick stuff and over the top where I could never see it. Big bodied deer had its head down the whole time. It was probably a better buck. Nobody up here. I wasn't even going to circle down through these meadows because usually somebody walks through them right at first light. The spot that I was set up in on the top is a spot where like usually I'll catch the deer when they push them out of these meadows. But nobody came through the meadows. I came down here, sun's up, it's 9 o'clock, and the deer were all still in the meadow. Just need that big one now to show up. Alright, well, it's getting to be late afternoon now. We've been seeing deer pretty much all day. Um, went back and ate some lunch and there's a deer right there. Anyway, we've been on them all day pretty much. They've been all around us, came through our camp. This morning Troy saw a big buck, but it was like a big three point and it might have been even a two by three and he didn't want to shoot it. But he said it's super heavy, it's a huge mass and uh, really wide, just didn't have the time length. And uh, it's a deer, I think it's a deer that we've had on camera for a few years. I love it. It's one of the coolest deer to me. Just a big, dirty buck. And so I'm going to go over where that deer was and try to kill him. And <laughs> Troy saw another, like, good four-point in that area this morning as well. Some little deer. And plus this other deer that I kind of like. He has a four-point on one side and a spike on the other. I might shoot him if I see him. But anyway, um, go have an evening hunt here and see if we can get back into the bucks. It's so good to be seeing deer. I saw 15 deer in six days in Colorado. And this sure beats the heck out of that. So I'm set up, just watching this hillside where that big buck was this morning. I jumped three bucks on the way in. A little four point and a three point and a two point. I got a weird looking two point feeding 130 yards right here. I got like 10 or 15 does and fawns right here. second and then fed back in on the other side of the canyon. Usually these big bucks show up very, very, very last light right before dark. So just sit back and enjoy the show. I'll try to film as much of it as I can. So right here it looks like I'm doing a really nice sunset shot and I actually was but what I was doing mostly was looking into my camera lens to see if I could capture the deer that was on that hillside. I couldn't. As you can see there you can only see the outlines of the trees in the background. I could see them clearly in my binoculars and in my scope but the camera wouldn't pick them up. So I made the decision to turn off the camera for some reason. I should have just let it probably roll but I took the shot right about 10 seconds after this clip ends. In my hurry to get over to where the deer was standing, I didn't vlog. I just ran over to where the deer was and I started to look immediately for blood. I searched for blood for till well after dark for probably an hour, never found any blood and returned to camp. I just got back to camp. Um, made me a little bit of a dehydrated dinner. Some, uh, that peak refuel, you guys ever tried that stuff? Some chicken Alfredo, I was pre pleasantly surprised. Usually I'm not a fan of dehydrated meals. But it was good, so anyway, I sat on that point till it got dark, nothing too exciting happened except like a huge buck showed up right before dark and I missed him. Anyway, I'm gonna go back and maybe try it again in the morning. For now, the hammock is calling my name, so thank you guys for watching this episode. I think this will be the end of it, so thanks for watching, guys.